Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and um, a couple of weeks ago I posted a video on how I created a dynamic um, uh, chart in Telegram where you can just, uh, oh, let me show you. Um, so you just type graph and then the system is going to give you an option for all the sensors that are stored in Grafana so it uh, just selects the the information straight from the database and then you select the device and uh, the way I configure this uh, this particular measurement is that it has a device tag which you can see just now and then within the device there are uh, fields and for this one there is only one field which is the temperature so I can only select that and then it's going to generate me a graph for the last 24 hours it's just dynamically going to read the values from the database based on what i have selected in the previous prompt and it's just going to give me a graph and then someone asked can we just also create a csv and it's like well i mean the data is there so there's no reason why we couldn't create a csv so now the flow creates a csv as you can see here so i get two messages one is the csv uh, which i which i can just click and then it downloads i mean of course if you're using like a um, like a Windows or a Mac um, Telegram application, it makes sense because then you can just open the thing in uh, in Excel. If you are using a phone, mm, I'm not sure if you would want to open the phone in a CSV file, but uh, maybe you can do that and email it to um, yourself or something like that. And then the CSV file is always going to have the same format. So there is a timestamp field which contains the you know, like the you know JavaScript timestamp value. I've added the date field as well, so you can convert it to a human readable date format, and then you have the actual value. So, you know, if you want to compare multiple values, then you can just uh, uh, export Excel files, and um, well, depending on whether they have the same dates or not, maybe you can just uh, link the two values together using either the date or the timestamp field with VLOOKUP or something like that. But now it's up to you. This code is only designed to get uh, or to, um, you know, graph a single data source. So therefore, in the CSV file, it's going to be a single value column. So let's see how it's done. And um, actually, it's fairly simple. I'm thinking if I have made any changes to the, um, to the main flow, but I don't think I have done that. Yeah, so everything is... Uh, Everything is uh, is unchanged, and again, if you want to really understand how it works, then you know there is a previous video which I've link, which I'm going to link in the video description, also in the cards. And if you remember, there was these three steps. So first, you you are asked which device you want to select, and then within the device, which field, and then finally we get the data, and then we generate the CSV file. Uh, sorry, we generate the uh, the graph, which is this is the part where it generates the graph, and then saves it as a PNG and then sends the PNG to you in a telegraph message. And I just piggybacked on the same process. I've created a new function module, which uh, it takes the same data that comes out of the Influx database and then it just basically creates a CSV file. So what I have done is I've taken the timestamp. I have created a function here which uh, converts the timestamp into a date time. And you can see here that from the timestamp, it, it gets the year, the month, the day, the hour, the minute, and the second, and it returns the date in, uh, well, I specified it that I want in this format. So date, month, year, hour, minute, second. So this is like a UK or European format. If you want the US format, you can just change that to MM and this one to DD, and that's going to be in the US format. Or maybe you want to change it to slash or something else, uh, you know, the separators. So you can play around with the formatting here, uh, or you can just um, ditch the whole thing altogether. So then in the CSV, I save the timestamp, or I put the timestamp, the, the, the date time, or the date format, or formatted date, and then the actual value. And yeah, I just you know put all the lines together, and this is the line which uh, prints the, the header. So as you can see, it says timestamp and date, and then for the actual value column, it will it will show you the the device name and the field name which was selected in the in the whole process. So it was really easy to do because the data was already here. So the output of this um, uh, function node 
is the text which goes into a text file. So I just dump it into a CSV file, so it has a fixed name. And um, maybe I could have played around specifying like a dynamic name based on the, the field name and the um, uh, device name and the field name, and then I just put the Telegram message together. So it is almost same as the um, the image, because um, it has a content which points to the file, the CSV file that just created. It has a caption, so it shows like you know the CSV output, and but the type is content. So for the image, the type is photo. For a file, the type is content, and then. Yeah, you just send it off to the, your Telegram sender node and then you get the message. Psh, that's it. So it was really like probably, I don't know, 20 minutes to put all this together. So, um, and I think it makes sense. It's, uh, it, it was a good request. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-export this part of the flow and I'm going to update the flow which I've already saved on the wiki. So I'm going to link you to the same thing and you can just download the new flow and, uh, and do the same thing. So if you have used this flow and you made some changes to that, then really the only additional things is basically this here. So the prep, the image dump, actually this should be called the CSV dump. Let me just change that. Um, So the CSV prep, the CSV dump, and the Telegram message. So these are the three nodes that are additional, and everything else uh, stayed as it was working before. So it should be fairly easy to add this functionality for your flow as well. So that's it. That will be all for today. Thanks for watching, and hopefully see you next video.